I want to talk a little bit about how corporations form. Uh, they basically are an entity created by a law, and the state uh, that they're incorporated in is the is the law that you follow. So, uh, if this you know if you're forming a corporation in Utah, you follow the Utah law, and it's a separate entity from the owners. So. Uh, that's one of the things that's nice about a corporation is uh, there's limited liability. Company, uh, stockholders can only lose the amount that they have invested in the company because the company is separate from the owners. Owners are also known as stockholders. And um, as a corporation, uh, it has certain rights and privileges. So uh, companies, corporations can be either privately held or publicly held. For a long time, Ralph Lauren was privately held, meaning Ralph Lauren and his friends and family and maybe a few rich people owned the company. But at some point, uh, if a company wants to get really uh, a lot of money, there's two ways that can do that. It can either borrow it, uh, but if they borrow it, then they have to pay it back and they have to pay interest. But they can also sell stock. You don't have to pay stock back. Uh, but the problem is, uh, not a problem, but the, the disadvantage is you lose some ownership. So if it's if you decide you want to go public, that means you're going to uh, make your stock available to anybody. Uh, and so we say it's publicly held. And this process can be really complicated. In fact, that's one of the disadvantages of a corporation is there's a lot of government regulation that you have to go through to even, uh, well, to become a, a company, a corporation in the first place and then to go public, it's even harder. Um, and also if you're a corporation, if you're organized as a corporation, you your profits will get taxed at the corporate level. And then when uh, you issue the profits in the form of dividends, and that's all that dividends are, they're just the profits that are distributed to the owners, then the owners have to pay tax on that on the dividends that they received so basically the same dollar gets taxed twice but the advantages are it's um, separate from the owners uh, stockholders can only lose what they have invested the ownership can be transferred easily because you just sell your stock and that's how the ownership is transferred and uh, it's continuous life also known as an indefinite life uh, owners come and go, but the continue the corporation still goes on. General Electric has been around for like since Benjamin Franklin's time, so well, 150 years. Um, lack of mutual agency for stockholders, and this has to do with partnerships where one partner can speak for the whole partnership if it's in the realm of the the scope of the partnership. That's not true for stockholders, so that's an advantage. And ease of capital accumulation just means it's a way to get a lot of money. Um, the way corporations are organized is you have your stockholders that own stock. And each share of common stock gives them a vote for the board of directors. And the board of directors are the ones who um, hire the president, the vice president, and other officers and sort of make policies for the company. And then the president, the vice president, and other officers are overseeing the corporation. Um, and this is a chart that sort of explains some of the different responsibilities of the people in a corporation. And stockholders can vote at stockholders' meetings. They can sell stock. They can buy additional shares of stock just by going into the, you know, calling their broker or uh, just buying it online. Uh, if a company uh, issues dividends, then stockholders get to receive them. And if the company liquidates and they, if there's anything left after they've paid all of their liabilities off, then uh, they would be able to get some of those, whatever money is left. Now, I want to pause on this particular uh, one uh, slide, stock certificates, because um, I basically want to tell you how a company even goes public. And I'm going to use Facebook for example. Um, for a long time, 
uh, Mark Zuckerberg and a few other people were the only ones that owned Facebook. And they wanted to uh, raise a lot of money. So they decided to uh, do what we call an IPO, an initial public offering. And what that means is they're going to sell billions of dollars, I mean in this case, uh, to raise billions of dollars, they're going to sell stock. And where did they get the shares of stock that they're selling? Well, when they uh, incorporated, and I'm assuming they incorporated in the state of California, California said that they had a certain amount of shares that they could sell, and those would be called the shares authorized. Um, and that's just the most, the maximum number that they can sell. Uh, now, they are or issue. Those are the same. They mean the same thing. Selling shares, issuing shares. Now, Mark and some of his other investors already had some of those shares uh, that had been issued to them, but there were a lot of unissued shares. And instead of selling those to, like, individual people, because they needed to raise so much money, uh, in an initial public offering, companies will sell all of their stock to underwriters. And these underwriters are big banks, like Bank of America or... Uh, like Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, um, used to be Lehman Brothers. Anyway, there's a lot of them. And these are companies, like for instance, let's just take uh, uh, Morgan Stanley. They would buy a big chunk of stock. And um, I think that Facebook's stock originally uh, was sold to these underwriters for $38 a share. And the underwriters are buying a bunch of it, and they're going to turn around and sell it to the public. And hopefully they'll sell it for more than $38 a share. So they'll make a profit on it. So when they buy these shares of stock, it becomes inventory to them because they're in the business of buying and selling stock. So once F uh, Facebook sold uh, their shares of stock, we'll just say to Morgan Stanley, but really it was like 25 different underwriters because it was so much money. Once they sell it, they uh, Facebook would record on its books, it would debit cash for the amount that they received from Morgan Stanley, and then credit common stock and paid in capital for common stock. And we'll talk about the journal entries uh, in another um, slide, but uh, that's basically what they're going to do. And then when Morgan Stanley turns around and sells it for whatever they can get out of it, it doesn't change any entries on Facebook's records because the price is going to go up and down. In fact, with Facebook, it, it took a dive right away. Uh, now it's up to past $60, but uh, it was kind of a big fiasco when Facebook issued their shares. Um, so uh, that's how it works. So this slide that you're looking at, stock certificate, basically just represents a share of stock and it proves that a stockholder has purchased shares. And this is in American Telephone and Telegraph Company. It's one of the oldest companies, AT&T. It's actually my uh, carrier right now that I use. And when the stock is sold uh, from shareholder to shareholder, then the stockholder has to sign a transfer endorsement on the back of the share of stock. And there are companies that will keep track of who owns the stock, and that's their only job. So Facebook would hire a company to keep track of all of their shareholders because they're changing all the time. So um, they uh, often don't do this in-house. They'll uh, sub well, hire it out to somebody who's some company who's that's their only job is to keep track of who owns the stock. And the reason it's important to know who owns the stock is if they're going to issue dividends, they got to know who to write the check out to. So when um, the corporation's charter, um, like Facebook, I don't know how many they were authorized to sell, but let's just say that they were authorized to sell 250 million shares. Okay, now that doesn't mean that they've sold them, and these are just pieces of paper. They didn't. Facebook didn't buy them. Uh, they just have authorization to sell this many shares, um, and each share represents some ownership in Facebook. And um, so, what's issued is what's actually been sold. And the way you would read this is, um, lots of times they'll just say issued. Uh, 92 556 295 
and 11, 111-015-133. And they won't even say it's 2008 and 2007. But the first number that they say is always for that most current year. And the second number is for the earlier year. So when you're doing reading financial statements, sometimes it'll say, it'll just say issued this and this. And you won't know what year unless you know that little rule. Uh, oh, let me back up. Uh, generally, companies will issue in one year and then they don't issue anymore for a long time. But in this case, they've issued some in 2008 and 2009. But that's not often the case. Um, so I already talked about what was issued. And this is, uh, if you look at this, they've taken one cent is the par value. And they, um, if you took one cent times the number that was issued, you get this number right here. Sorry, that was my phone. I have the cricket ring, and I forgot to turn it off. Okay, so par value is something that uh, students often find very confusing. It's just an arbitrary amount assigned to the stock, uh, and some states say you have to have a par value. Other states say, no, you don't. It doesn't matter. The key thing to remember is this. It does not in any way equal the market price. And the market price, also known as the price that it's sold for, also known as the fair market value, is the amount that the share of stock is going to sell for. So Facebook, um, I don't know what their par value was, but it could have been on the Facebook stock, it could have been like a penny, uh, but the market price was $38. So uh, the par value is just something that comes into account when we do the journal entries. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it's any, it has nothing to do with what it's worth. I just want to be clear about that. Some stock has par value, and this is determined by the state that it's incorporated in. Some has no par, and uh, others have stated value. Stated value is treated exactly like par value. It's just another word, but it means the same thing. So when you issue par stock, this is the journal entry. Let's give an example first. September 1st, Matrix Inc. issued 100,000 shares of $2 par value stock for 25 per share. This is the market value. So you're going to record the cash received, and the cash received will always be the number of shares times the market value. Then, so that's 125,000. Then you have to record the uh, number of shares times the par value in, uh, per share in the common stock account. So you'll debit cash, and then you'll credit common stock for number of shares times the par value, $2. And the difference goes into this account, paid in capital in excess of par value common stock. So this is the journal entry, what it's going to look like. Debit cash for 100,000 times 25. Credit common stock for $2 times 100,000. And the excess goes into the paid in capital account. If you were to do a balance sheet uh, and the stockholders equity section right after you issued that stock, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. This is what it would look like. Stockholders equity, you've got your common stock, it lists the par value, the shares authorized, the shares issued and outstanding. And outstanding uh, will come into play a little bit later when we talk about treasury stock. So this is the amount that was credited to that account. This is an account. And the paid in capital in excess of par that's the amount that was credited. And then here's retained earnings. Now, uh, lastly, what I want to talk about is um, students often have a question. Uh, what is paid in capital? And then what is this paid in capital? So stockholders equity consists of two parts. One is all the money that we've received from selling stock. In this case, it's just common because all we've sold is common. 
So all the money that we've received from selling stock, if you added it together, it's two million five hundred thousand. That would be considered our total paid in capital. And that is a total. It's not an account. It's just a total. Whereas this paid in capital in excess of par is an actual uh, account that is credited. If we had s uh, issued preferred stock, then we would have uh, common paid in capital in excess of par, and then we would have preferred stock and paid in capital on preferred. And you would add all four of those amounts together to get the total paid in capital. The other part of stockholders' equity is I call it earned capital because that's all retained earnings is. Retained earnings is a sum of all the earnings that you've ever had minus all the dividends you've ever paid out. So stockholders equity is uh, composed of com uh, stock or money that you've received from selling your stock that's paid in capital versus earn earnings. If you issue stock uh, but you don't get cash for it. Um, this happens a lot when companies are first starting up. They want to uh, buy things, but they don't have enough money, so they'll just say, hey, take some of our stock. Um, so in this case, instead of selling the stock for cash, they sold it for land valued at 2500 So the journal entry is very similar, you'll see, to what it was when we issued it for cash except instead of debiting cash, we debit land for the 2500 um, And uh, often we don't know the fair market value of each share of stock when we do this. So we look at the land and say, okay, the land is worth 2500 so that must be the value of 100,000 shares of stock. Um, and if you wanted to back into the market value per share, you could take 2500 and divide it by 100,000 shares and say, oh, the fair market value of the stock must be $25 a share. Um, but if you're uh, first starting up and you haven't gone public yet, there's not a market established, a market price established for your stock. You really only know what your stock is worth uh, when somebody is willing to buy it. Um, until then, you have to just sort of guess. Um, once it's sold, then there's an established market and uh, everybody knows what it's worth. It's listed on the market and it changes daily, hourly sometimes. Okay, we'll stop here.